welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. The National Weather Service. And good Friday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 30th of January, and as always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information, current conditions, as well as forecast information is always online at weather.gov slash Alaska. You can get to the same place by going to arh.noaa.gov. Give us a call on the weather info line at 800-472-0391, and you can keep track of your Alaska weather on social media all day long. The websites are conditioned to uh, behave better with your mobile device if you're out in the bush or if you like to find information on Facebook during the day. Uh, there's uh, forecast information, sometimes some climate information on NWS Alaska for Facebook. Uh, Fairbanks will share their morning cold temperatures with you from NWS Fairbanks on the Twitter.com box. And on YouTube, you can get your daily afternoon map briefing around 4 o'clock or so from NWS Anchorage and NWS Fairbanks. You can always search for more information as well in the afternoon and evening hours simply by going to AKWX TV. That's the full broadcast uh, on YouTube for you a little bit after this show is completed from our broadcast partner here at Alaska Public. Here's a look at the current hazards across southeastern Alaska at this point. Uh, we're watching for uh, high winds to develop as we head into the week, and there is potential for some pretty strong and gusty winds that will develop as the system is lifting northward and the pressure gradient increases. So a high wind watch that will start from Saturday afternoon and go into Sunday. It uh, looks like northeasterly winds up to 60 miles per hour are possible there. So some stronger gusts around the Juneau and Douglas areas. We'll keep watch on that and have more information for you throughout the daytime tomorrow. Again, weather.gov slash Alaska is the best place to get that uh, first look at developing information for southeastern Alaska. Looking further northward, quite a bit going up on the North Slope as well. All winter weather advisories and blizzard warnings, so mainly due to uh, poor visibility in the red shaded areas. That's from Wainwright south and west down the coast. A blizzard warning is in effect and basically we're talking about poor visibility and some strong and gusty winds that will continue into Saturday. For parts of the north and western slope, blizzard warnings also in effect there. That'll go until uh, 6 a.m. on Saturday. Those winds may gust upwards of 50 miles per hour as we go through late night tonight and into tomorrow. For areas around Barrow and eastward, it's a winter weather advisory. That means uh, not as bad conditions there, but certainly something that could uh, cause problems for your uh, traveling around or just a general uh, orientation if you have to step outside. Visibility may drop to about a half mile at times, and the winds are going to be fairly blustery as well. Look for those winds upwards of 25 to 35 miles per hour, generally from the west and southwest. They'll be a little bit more westerly out here across the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. So those are winter weather advisories and again, blizzard warnings for the north and western parts of the Arctic coast and the slope. A winter weather advisory is also posted around the Koyukuk Valley there, including areas around Ambler and then for the Bering Strait communities in St. Lawrence Island. Winter weather advisories also in effect for you. So a lot of wind moving through the area, a lot of visibility that could uh, suffer because of that. And again, it could uh, make you lose your orientation if you have to step outside. Make sure you go carefully wherever you may go. 
Here's a look at the Bering Sea satellite picture now. Several waves of low pressure are working their way up from the south and west. And as you recall, a very stable region of high pressure is sitting across the interior and on across the west coast. So what's happening? Well, the high pressure is starting to lose some ground and its control with these storm systems moving up from the west and southwest. As that happens, that very stable zone is starting to shift a little bit more to the east. So the weather pattern for all of mainland Alaska is beginning to shift as well. With each one of these disturbances coming in from the south and west, that western side is being chewed up just a little bit more and a little bit more. And gradually things are going to change. And when that happens, there could be some significant cold dropping in from the north and from the west coming out of eastern Siberia. So for now, we're just watching that change begin across the west coast of the Bering Sea. You're seeing those southwesterly waves move in all the way up the west coast and around the periphery of that very stable zone of high pressure. Northeasterly winds coming out of the southwestern uh, sections of Alaska are kind of pushing that cold into the central and eastern chain. But we're getting more of that southerly draw. That means more moisture from warmer areas in the Pacific and eventually again an erosion of that very stable area of cold weather across the interior. What does that look like over the mainland of Alaska? Well, you can see those clouds starting to move their way back into northwestern Alaska, building into the Brooks Range. And remember, high pressure stretches from northwestern parts of Canada all the way through the interior and really out into the northern Bering Sea. On the south side of that, we're also seeing kind of encroaching weather systems. This wave of high clouds that we see on the southern side of our satellite picture here is uh, really attached to a much stronger system and one that will continue to strengthen as we go through the weekend. In fact, northeasterly winds should start to pick up for the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern chain as we head into the weekend. We'll start to see a little more precipitation there as well. So watch for more and more cloud cover as we uh, look toward Kodiak Island, Sand Point, Unalaska, Dutch Harbor, Nikiski. Uh, Nikolsky, and uh, as we get into Saturday and Sunday, those winds are going to come up. We're also watching for the winds to come up again across uh, Juneau and the Douglas area as we get into the weekend. As that pressure gradient increases across southeast, you're going to get into some stronger northeasterly winds. And again, with the high wind watch, we're going to watch for those winds to start to pick up as we head into Saturday afternoon, probably reaching their maximum there Saturday night and Sunday morning. Some of that could reach upwards of 60 miles an hour. Today's weather map shows a low pressure system, relatively weak system there around Haida Gwaii. It's got some colder air on the west side of it, warmer air is lifting northward. But all in all, not a whole lot of precipitation there at this point for southeastern Alaska. High pressure is entrenched across western Canada, 1,050 millibars. Uh, aviators know that is that magic number where the altimeters don't work quite so well. Up across the northwest coast, enough warm air that there might be a little bit of a freezing uh, precipitation there across the Chukchi Sea coast. Uh, most likely that's a sensor being a little strange, but uh, it's a little bit of wind, a little bit of snow, and a little bit of ice across the north slope there with high pressure pushing all the way out into the western Bering Sea. And then we have warm air surging northward once again on the western side of that very cold weather system. As we look into tonight, chances are it's going to be snow and blowing snow for some parts of the Brooks Range. Most areas on the south side of the western Brooks Range will be looking at a couple inches of accumulation. Ambler could be one of those places. High pressure east of Norton Sound at 1043 millibars extends into the ridge into the western parts of Canada. And here comes the wind for southern sections of the Alaska Peninsula and probably some rain and snow showers are generally west of Kodiak Island. Notice these lines of constant pressure. The isobars are kind of getting squished together across southeastern Alaska as high pressure sits over central Yukon. And here comes the storm system lifting northward. We expect the winds to start to pick up as we head into Saturday for southeastern Alaska. Notice the system out across the western Bering isn't just making a run in from west to east across the Bering Sea. It's going to have to travel north, and as it does so, it's going to keep spinning and keep grabbing some storm energy there, and we'll see if that can't drop into north and western Alaska as we get into the next couple days. High pressure, though, is still in charge of the Yukon Valley at 1,040 millibars by Saturday afternoon and across the western parts of Yukon at 1,040 millibars. Once again, notice the packing of that pressure gradient. This is key to the forecast. Winds will be blowing out of the Copper River Basin. If you're a, a mariner across the northern Gulf, you watch for some stronger gusts around the Copper River Basin. Watch for those winds to pick up across southeastern Alaska. That means low-level wind shear for aviators there. The storm system itself is still well to the south. The frontal boundary, though, starting to encroach across southwestern Alaska and the Alaska Peninsula. Once again, notice that pressure gradient tightening up across the peninsula and a chance for some light rain and snow across the central and eastern chain. Maybe snow showers on the northern side on the Bering Sea coast there for places like Port Hyden, 
Pilot Point a little bit down to the south and west as well. Out across the west, colder air still trying to move in from the east. It does not move eastward. In fact, it moves northward by Sunday, and that storm system drops to 1,017 millibars. We're still looking at a southerly flow across south or across the northwestern coast. High pressure now, instead of being right over the Yukon Valley, pivots to more of a north and easterly orientation. It's sitting across northern parts of Yukon. It's still dominating the weather picture across the Yukon Valley. Things still look pretty clear across the interior, but now it has moved out of the way. So now we'll have to watch for this system to start moving in and taking its place as we head into next week. And that again will change the weather pattern for just about all parts of the state. Now, as we look across the Gulf of Alaska, our warmer air is lifting northward. Once again, we still have a very tight packing of that pressure gradient going into Sunday. We will still be watching for high winds, especially across northern parts of southeast. As rain moves in from the south, we're dealing with snow across southern parts and central areas of southeastern Alaska, and we're back to rain for the Alaska Peninsula. Meanwhile, everywhere well, pretty much dry across the interior and south central. But the winds coming out of the Copper River Basin could be strong once again. So we'll be watching for wind events as we go into Saturday and Sunday across south central and southeastern Alaska in those locations that I mentioned. Now for temperatures, 30s and 40s for southeastern Alaska today, single digits or below for southern Yukon, including Whitehorse, Talkeetna 22, Squetna only 5, 18 in Anchorage, 20s and 30s for Homer and Seward and Prince William Sound in the 20s, Valdez only 21. Copper River Basin around Golcana, just single digits for you today. 23 below in Fairbanks, 36 below in Eagle and Fort Yukon. Looking further northward, low to mid-teens across a good part of the Arctic coast. Barrow was up to 18 today, Kivalina 13. Uh, Consibu 4, Shishmaref was showing temperatures that were uh, well below zero, about uh, 15 to 20 below today. 13, below, 13 above in Nome, Grayling was 6 below. McGrath was showing temperatures closer to zero, as you'll see here. And teens for most of King Salmon and uh, looks like Dillingham. Kodiak Island closing in on 40 degrees late this afternoon, 20s and 30s for the Alaska Peninsula. The Pribilovs hovering around 30 degrees and mid 30s for the central and western chain. Overnight low temperatures are going to be awfully cold once again. 43 below around Fort Yukon, 29 below in Fairbanks, around the single digits, or maybe even below for some parts of south central. Kodiak 36, southeast in the 20s and 30s. The chain also looking at temperatures in the 30s tonight. Nome looking at one above, Barrow eight below, so still cold up there, but things are changing up to zero tomorrow. Kotzebue Sound in the teens and 20s, Nome back to 21, southwestern Alaska in the single digits and low teens. 30s and 40s for the peninsula with those southeasterly winds starting to pick up, 41 in Kodiak. A uh, look at Northway and Eagle looking at temps from 5 to 10 below, south central in the 20s and southeast in the 30s and 40s. On to flying weather now. MBFR conditions expected for the eastern coast with blizzard conditions subsiding in the north and west. We may still have some blowing snow across the Beaufort Sea coast and around Anaktuvik Pass with a southwesterly flow developing. Don't be surprised to see MBFR, maybe even IFR if snow showers develop. Look for MBFR across parts of the Gulf and Haida Gwaii and out across the western Bering Sea. Here are your past conditions. Again, I'm going to keep an eye out for some IFR, most likely MVFR, though, with snow showers in the region and that southwesterly flow blowing through Attigan and Anaktuvik Pass. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass and Rainy Pass and Windy Pass should all be VFR tomorrow with high pressure and charge VFR in Isabel and then pass to pass. And we expect Tanita Pass to be visual flight rule. Porter's Pass looks okay. You might run into some low level wind shear though if you're making it away across the Prince William Sound region though. And Chilkoot and White Pass also start to watch for low level wind shear as you head into southeastern Alaska. Warmer air is building into the eastern Gulf. Look at these freezing levels all the way up to two, four, six, even 8,000 feet there across the eastern Gulf. And we have a pocket of warmer air across the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta and west of Nunavak Island as high as 4,000 feet. Icing potential above 2,000 feet should be expected across the Brooks Range. Some of that peaks out across the western range. Occasional moderate is possible there and along the frontal boundary in the Gulf above 3,000 feet. A lot of that stays just south of Kodiak and just south of the Shumagin Islands and mainly just south and west of Haida Gwaii. So most areas around the Gulf Coast not impacted just yet. The jet stream shows our controlling ridge of high pressure here, but it's starting to be undercut by a southern storm and also by a wave coming out of eastern Siberia. So it's going to be interesting to see how this develops in the coming week. High pressure across the Bering Sea, though, is still controlling our weather pattern, really, with that strong northwesterly flow in the north and that blowing offshore there from the west coast and out across the Alaska Peninsula with 50-knot winds there. 
at 9,000 feet, and high pressures clearly seen just south of the Bering Strait. You can see your stronger winds ramping up on the south and western side, 40 knot winds there, and also our west and northwesterly flow in charge of the interior. A 30 knot wind there around Eagle and Northway. More of an east to westerly flow across the Gulf that really starts to pick up around the Alaska Peninsula and just west of Kodiak. And a south and easterly flow coming into southeastern Alaska. It settles down just a bit around 3,000 feet, 10 to 35 knots there. Generally light winds at this level across the interior. And then those winds pick up once again, especially south of the chain and the Alaska Peninsula up to 50, even 60 knots there. So don't be surprised if we have some turbulence in that region. And of course we do. Light to isolated moderate, maybe even occasional moderate south of that. Probably starting to see some low-level wind shear uh, reaching up to isolated moderate around Kodiak Island and the Alaska Peninsula. And easily some occasional moderate developing across the central and eastern part of southeast Alaska tomorrow. Maybe reaching isolated severe if those winds actually become a real, the real deal as we get into Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, and then Sunday morning. So aviators, keep your eyes on southeast, especially northern parts of southeast with the wind situation developing there. Turbulence also expected with poor visibility out across the eastern Beaufort Seacoast continuing through tomorrow. That's a look at your aviation forecast. I'll be back in just a few minutes with the rest of your marine weather. Stay tuned. Good evening, I'm Harry Keeling on behalf of Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media. Welcome to Hangar Flying. This evening our guest is Brian Leist. Brian has a long and varied career in aircraft maintenance. Uh, in fact, after serving in the Air Force, and thank you for your service, Brian. You're welcome, Harry. Uh, Brian attended, uh, after the Air Force, Brian attended Northrop University where he earned his AMP. He then uh, worked for McDonnell Douglas uh, on MD-80s and C-17s. He's got a, a wide range of experience from general aviation to corporate to commercial. He was with Alaska Airlines for 11 and a half years as a line maintenance supervisor. And uh, a couple of years ago started his own company, Flytech, which is out on the shores of Lake Hood. Brian has six full-time mechanics working for him and I can tell you from personal experience, they are real professionals and craftsmen. Welcome, Brian. Thanks for having me, Harry. Brian, it's winter. Probably don't need to tell you that or the audience. Um, nights are longer, temperatures colder. And our viewers around the state, pilots, mechanics, aircraft owners, aviation enthusiasts are, are flying in winter. And, and there's some considerations that I'd like you to talk about. So. Um, what kind of recommendation you have on taking care of your airplane in the wintertime and winter flying and whatnot? Well, just like us, they like to be warm, so uh, the best thing you can do is, is keep them warm. Uh, if you don't have the luxury of having a hangar or the ability to put one in a hangar, uh, at least uh, get an in engine blanket, cover it up, get wing covers, uh, cover your tail feathers, and if possibly the whole fuselage. They make covers for everything nowadays. So, hangar it if you can. And, and I think the advantage to that are obvious. But what if, um, what if you can't hangar it, or what, what if you're going out to, to a, your cabin or something, obviously don't have a hangar out there. Talk a little bit about, your, about um, preheating. Okay, there, um, if you don't have electricity, there are certain heating devices, such as the Red Dragon, that uh, have their own fuel source that you can use. Um, you've got to, Stay close to those. You don't want to walk away from something like that, but they'll uh, they'll get your engine warm enough for you to you know, start the engine without any damage. Um, again, keep all your um, the inlets covered up. If you can put your engine blanket on and uh, keep as much heat in there as you possibly can, and then watch your temperatures um, as they rise. So um, you and I were talking about a the precaution. I mean, I've got a Red Dragon, but that the air that comes out is pretty hot and you want to be careful, don't you, with it? Sure, you've got to watch out for all your um, uh, pieces and parts that are inside the engine compartment, um, your wiring. You don't want to aim it directly at your wiring. You don't want to melt any shielding or any plastics that, that could uh, otherwise melt. So um, that, that's a caution. You, know, you want it hot, but not too hot. And the other alternative, of course, is if you have power, um, Talk a little bit about the Tannis and some of the other options there. Yeah, the, the two main ones that, that we see here in Alaska are the, the Rife preheat systems and the Tannis. The, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, 
The Rife has, uh, they have band clamps that go around each cylinder. You can go so far as to put a, a pad on your uh, oil cooler, your oil pan. Um, you can boost the amperage up twice so it heats up twice as fast. Um, the Rife is more or less the pads that go on your, your oil cooler. Um, there's also the op opportunity to purchase an item that's a remote control system that you can call from your cell phone and start these units up from long distance. And uh, really? that's, that's becoming pretty popular these days. Wow. Um, so I guess the secret is uh, the oil, isn't it? I mean, the viscosity of the oil, the temperature of the oil, and one of, if you don't have an oil temperature uh, indication, which you, you can with some of these engine uh, gauges, but um, I've always heard that uh, when you pull the dipstick out, if the, if the oil looks like it's warm and it flows reasonably uh, smoothly, that's one good indication of, of the success of your preheating. Is that true? Absolutely. Yeah, when you, when you pull the dipstick out, if it looks like clean oil and it runs off smoothly like water, that's, that's what you're looking for. Okay. Um, you know what? I want to get you on again uh, next time, but I, I, I've got about one minute. I want to ask you one quick question. Um, what about any thoughts on intake baffles, some of these winterization kits? Sure. Um, we see a variety of uh, winterization kits. Um, they're sold by different companies, but uh, in the winter time you want to try to control that airflow inside when we get uh, sub-zero temperatures. Uh, you get that cold air on the cylinders uh, that can cause some serious problems. But they're, they're bafflings that uh, can go over those intakes and kind of control that temperature. And uh, it's, it's kind of an experimental thing. Some, some people will block half of them and uh, depending on, on how your engine's running, and uh, the temperatures you're flying in. It's all about monitoring you know, what you're seeing on your gauges and how much you need to block off. And it's fair to say that you, you gotta be careful because you wanna take them off. And I think with my 185, it, the recommendation is to take them off when it gets to be 20 degrees. Right. Yeah. Um, Brian, I'm gonna get you back on. And I okay. uh, got some good ideas and I, wanna, I want you to share them with our audience. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, until next time, fly safe. Thanks, Harry. We'll see you again on Monday. Here's a look at the winds for Saturday. No doubt a wind event is shaping up there. We have storm force winds predicted for parts of the Lynn Canal. As we head southward, those gusty winds will continue. Look for that northerly flow sweeping down the inner channels there, 40 to 55 knots with 11 to 15 foot seas. Once again, a high wind watch is posted for Saturday afternoon going into Sunday for the Juneau and Douglas areas. Now, coastal areas into the Gulf looking at a north and easterly flow, at least 30 to 35 knots, 25 knots up in the north. As we get into Sunday, we're still talking about some strong winds across the northern inner channels are 45 to 55 knots, 15 foot seas there, higher gusts on the order of 60 miles per hour in some cases and east and northeasterly winds along the coast still going around 30 to 35 knots, 25 knots from the northeast around the Clarence Strait. So again, mariners and aviators pay attention to the wind forecast, especially in the northern and central areas of southeast heading through the weekend. South and central areas are looking at a north and easterly wind. Strongest winds are going to be probably gusting out of the Copper River Basin, so watch for that. Three to six foot seas from Prince William Sound and then on the outside of uh, Montague Island. Northeasterly is coming down from uh, the Prince William Sound region all the way down past Seward and Resurrection Bay. Freezing spray inside of Resurrection Bay it looks like, so watch for some of that. Northeasterly is up to 45 knots on the south side of Kodiak Island. 15 to 20 foot seas coming up there. North and easterly is also coming down Cook Inlet. 10 to as high as 30 knots when you get to the western side of the Barrens, also with a threat of freezing spray. The uh, wind direction really doesn't change too much over Sunday. Still blowing from the east and northeast, predominantly around 10 knots in, inside Prince William Sound. 12 foot seas on the south side of the Kenai and the Cook Inlet. You're looking at 10 to 20 knots and 30 knots, diminishing winds on the south side of Kodiak. Now 17 foot seas there by Sunday. For the Alaska Peninsula, northeasterlies will be a lot stronger on the south side. Up to 45 knots there, 22, even 23 foot seas there, south of Sand Point to King Cove, and 5 to 10 foot seas on the Bering side. Those winds diminish as we head into Sunday, both on the Bering and the Pacific side, 25 to 30 knots there with 17 to 18 foot seas uh, on the Alaska Peninsula coastline of the Pacific as we go through Sunday. 
For the Aleutians, north and easterly winds will make it all the way out toward the central chain. 15 to 30 knots, though, with the strongest winds north of Unalaska. And on the south side, up to 40 knots there, south of Mikulski and Unalaska. More of a northerly flow there, south of Adak and Atka at 15 knots, 9-foot seas there. And 15-foot seas developing as we get into Saturday out in the west there, from Kiska all the way out toward Chemi, about 14-foot seas there, becoming easterly on Sunday. And north and easterly winds continue their push out to the west there as the weather systems are gradually kind of dancing around each other up across the northern Bering Sea. 25 knots on the Bering Sea coast, uh, 25 to 30 knots on the Pacific coastline. For the west coast, southerlies into St. Lawrence Island at 20 knots, northeasterlies out of the Kuskokwim Bay at 30 knots, and we'll also see northeast winds up to 20 knots around the Priblops with a 7-foot sea. The freezing spray threat may diminish just a little bit out in the west, but the ice edge is staying put. Look for a northeasterly wind around St. Paul and St. George with a 7-foot sea. Easterlies coming across St. Lawrence Island at 15 knots. And for the Arctic coast, south and westerly winds into Kotzebue Sound at 20 knots, becoming westerly across Barrow and Wainwright at 20 to 25 knots, and even stronger for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, up to 40 knots there. Those winds should diminish and turn a little bit more to the north and west, down to 30 knots by Sunday. A south and westerly flow uh, coming in across Barrow, and then becoming a little more southerly as you come down the Chukchi Sea coast, 15 to 25 knots at its strongest, and southeasterly is blowing out of Kotzebue Sound by Sunday afternoon at 20 knots. Recapping tonight's weather, high winds are developing, we think, for southeastern Alaska. There is a potential that we'll see strong and maybe even damaging gusts around the Juneau and Douglas area as we get into Saturday afternoon and Sunday midday. A high wind watch is posted for that period because we think gusts are possible up to 60 miles per hour. So watch for that and if the winds start to pick up, it's a good time to start packing things in and making sure the windows are locked down on the boat. As we look out into the Gulf, a pretty potent weather system there is lurking, gradually creeping northward. As it does so, the winds are also going to pick up for the Alaska Peninsula. We don't expect that type of wind we'll see in southeast, but we do know the winds are going to blow there and look for a chance for some rain and snow showers around the peninsula and out into the central and eastern chain. We also have blizzard conditions now across the northwestern a north slope, and we'll see winter weather advisories and poor visibility all the way into the eastern Beaufort Sea coast as we go through Saturday. Things should ease up a little bit as we head into Sunday. That's a look at your Alaska weather. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.